perhaps the most famous advocates for refugees, George and Amal Clooney, now speaking out to help the millions forced to flee, searching for a safe haven to escape their embattled homeland. And as ABC's Alex Marquardt shows us, that fight is far from over. They're the red carpet power couple, actor George Clooney and his wife, renowned human rights lawyer Amal. I'm of Irish descent, and in America, uh, uh, 100 years ago, we were refugees. But in a new video released today by the International Rescue Committee, they're in front of a very different kind of audience, Syrian refugee families now living in Germany. Irish were treated terribly in America for a period of time and not accepted. And America learned to accept all of these ideas. It's what our country is, is a country of immigrants. And we have not recently done a very good job of remembering who we are. The Cloonies sharing their own stories and shining a light on the stories of some of the millions who have been forced to flee the brutal war in Syria. <laughs> Today, the fifth anniversary of the start of the conflict, the Clooney's are not the only celebrities standing with refugees. Families, children. Struggling to stay alive. The cast of HBO's Game of Thrones is featured in another IRC video released today. And Angelina Jolie visited refugees living in camps in Lebanon. My own family is from Lebanon, and they also ran away from a war and were lucky enough to be accepted by a European country. For Amal Clooney, this cause is personal. She grew up in Lebanon during a bloody 15-year civil war. Many years later, everybody's doing well. You know, my father has returned to Beirut. I hope that, as you say, you will be able to go back to a safe and free Syria. In many ways, these Syrian families are lucky. They made it to Germany, which has taken in the highest number of refugees and migrants in Europe since the war in Syria ignited a massive humanitarian crisis. Almost five million Syrians have fled the country, tens of thousands making the deadly journey by boat to Europe. And while their plight has dominated the headlines, millions more have remained trapped inside, unable to escape. Two weeks ago, we traveled to Syria to try to tell their stories. I've reported from Syria many times, but this time it felt different. For the first time since the war began, there's now a fragile ceasefire in place. On the outskirts of Damascus, near the front line, these kids out playing in an empty lot, shooting marbles, told us that day something was missing. Today, they didn't bomb, this boy said. Nothing. There hasn't been anything today. Few people I spoke with believe the relative quiet can last, but many are praying it does. My mom, I, my uh, heart, and my baby, all are tired of this war. All. All people here. Hello. Kifak. Elsewhere, these people were from a town besieged by rebel groups, brought to us by pro-Assad forces. But it's moments like these when the politics and propaganda fall away, leaving just the horrors of this war. 21-year-old Jamila was in her house when a rocket fell on it, she told me, killing three relatives and blinding her. She was pregnant at the time and has since given birth to a daughter, Cardinia, now three months old. All I want is to see my child I've never seen, she said, and to lift the siege on my village. People are dying there. It was clear these people were trotted out for the cameras, but what's also clear is that they've suffered a lot and they're really just innocents who are caught between much more powerful sides. This fragmented conflict is not just dangerous, but difficult to cover. Which is why, to visit a besieged town, we had to rely on Hezbollah, the Lebanese militant group which the U.S. considers a terrorist organization. Rare access to the group and a town they've surrounded. You look around here, driving through Damascus, people are walking around, driving to work. And it's incredible to think that just less than an hour down the road, tens of thousands of people are living under siege. Activists in the town of Madaya say that dozens have died of starvation and that malnutrition is rampant. The world was shocked by videos like these posted all over social media. We can't verify those numbers or these videos. To get to Madaya, we followed Hezbollah. There's a tank right there, a bunch of soldiers up there. One rule, we couldn't film them. 
we had hoped to meet residents from Madaya in a buffer zone without going all the way in where rebel groups, including jihadi factions, have control. But the residents were too scared to come out, and Hezbollah wouldn't let us go farther in. What we can't show you are about a dozen uh, Syrian and Hezbollah guys who have accompanied us up here. We understand there are around five or 600 fighters in the town from different rebel factions. Apparently, until the ceasefire went into place, this would have been uh, too dangerous a place to stand. This is one of 18 areas across Syria that are under siege. Half a million people are trapped by forces from all sides. The biggest number, around 200,000, by ISIS. The people of Madaya and so many others used as pawns, unable to escape, longing for peace, for quiet, for a safer country. Like the families George Clooney met through the IRC. Oh, these are people who have left because of incredible tragedy. And they were people who had real lives and their worlds were uh, destroyed. One of the reasons we've released videos with George Clooney, one of the reasons that the Game of Thrones cast are so committed to working with us is they've seen a dehumanization of these people. And I think the most important thing is to hold on to that idea that it's not a great mass of people, it's a lot of individuals who have their own stories that deserve to be treated with dignity and with respect. Overwhelmed by the historic wave of migrants and refugees, some European countries are deciding it's time to start closing their borders, leaving thousands camped out in tent cities, living in a kind of purgatory while their fates are decided. Few predict that this war that has ravaged Syria for five agonizing years will end soon. But the temporary ceasefire has paved the way for peace talks underway right now in Geneva. A step, a glimmer of hope that a peace could, at last, be within reach. For Nightline, I'm Alex Marquardt in Syria. Our thanks to Alex Marquardt and Bruno Rober for that report.